Let's start off by having a look at just the, just the normal one will refresh our memory, right? We'll do, under this first graph, we'll do y equals x squared. We might even put a couple of graphs on each one just so we don't have to draw so many axes, okay? Now you remember y equals x squared, it has this um, funny shape to it. We gave it a name, we called it a parabola, right? So you should draw for yourself a nice uh, parabola here. Oh, my God. Okay, so this is the shape. If you need to excuse yourself, don't just do it and, and let the rest of us get on with it. Uh, we won't lock Come on. Yeah, yeah, no, well, what, for whatever reason, like I don't care what the reason is. <laughs> like I really don't give a rip. Like just. Okay. Yes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. You should be doing it. So, this is our standard parabola. Now, I want to remind you, okay, it's, it's got this curvature to it, right? And importantly, like right there, if you zoomed in really, really close to the origin, it should be like almost flat across there, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't like bounce off, okay? It, it sort of gently comes down to what we call, do you remember? I gave you two names for that important point there, where it, where it changes direction. Do you remember what that was called? Two names. Uh, the fancy name, the Latin name started with a V. V. <laughs> Vertex, very good, vertex. Um, and vertex is just Latin for a um, turning point, right? It's turning around. So, this is our, our kind of normal version, y equals x squared, right? This is the parabola. Let's compare it to some different ones. <clears throat> Let's have a look at, say, question 1c. Let's do 1c. So this is what 1c asks us to draw, y equals x squared minus 7, right? So you can see it's so, so similar to what we were graphing before, right? x squared, x squared minus 7. So that minus 7, the effect that it has is it takes that entire shape and it shifts it or moves it down 7 units, right? If I was at the origin before, well now I'll be seven units below the origin. If I was at some point up here, suppose that was five, I'll be five below, uh, I'll be seven below that, which would be negative two or something like that, right? So in fact, you can actually get your ruler out, and if this looks accurate, this is what we can do, okay? Uh, I don't know what the scale of yours looks like, okay? But suppose if we went down uh, on mine, let's see, I'm gonna go, that far. On my diagram, that's 10 centimeters. Obviously, yours will be a bit smaller, but you get the idea. Okay, maybe it's three centimeters for you. So I'm gonna call that number there, negative seven. Okay, so I'm gonna be down there. That's where my new turning point will be. I can get the rest of the points by going anywhere and going down the same distance, right? So if I said that was 10 centimeters, I'll do 10 centimeters from, say, here, and 10 centimeters from here. Right? So all of these are going to be shifted down. So now if I try to join the dots, okay, I'm going to do something like this. Okay, so you see, same shape, but it's just been moved. Okay? Now, this is not easy to draw. It's not easy for anyone, really. Um, it's not easy with a whiteboard marker. It's not easy in your books, which is why I actually highly recommend for this whole topic, anytime you have to do graphs with curvature to them. Like, you can't just use a ruler, right? Uh, you can get a template, like, you just put it down. It's, they're not cheap, unfortunately, but you can get them for like, I don't know, 12 to 15 dollars if you go hunting and you try and get one special. School sells them, but they're full price. Um, but, but the thing is, it's just like a, man, rulers are bad. Um, it's just like a stencil. I think it's like 16 or 17. So you know how there's stencils, right? And um, you know, when you were first learning how to do letters, characters, so there's an outline of like the letter A, like this, right? And all you have to do is pick up your pencil, put the stencil down, and then you just trace through, you like, uh, uh, uh. and then you take off your stencil and there's a perfect A, right? Well, when you do this, you've got a parabola shape, and there are other shapes there which are useful as well, right? And you'll get it perfectly, like the curvature will be perfect every single time, and it won't take you a long time, it'll be precise. So for me, like, you know, if you're doing a bit of maths later on, like stage six, you're gonna keep on drawing these. So 
I feel like it's a worthwhile investment. I got one when I was in year nine and I, I kept on using it all the way through until year 12, okay? Um, I would still be using it, but unfortunately they're a bit fragile. Mine broke a little bit, but it, it, it was enough, okay? So there you go. Now, I wanna point out something interesting here, okay? See how you've got a y-intercept here? It's negative seven because it used to be zero and then we went down seven units. Is that okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, now, there's a y-intercept here, but when we moved it down, now we've got x-intercepts as well. So these two values over here, right? So I'm gonna spot here and a spot here. How would you work out where those are? Hmm. I'm not gonna answer it just yet. I, I just wonder, how would you go about trying to find out? What does it look like, roughly, on your diagram? How would you actually find it out? Exactly, Nathan? Um, wouldn't like on tests, wouldn't there be like the little dots? Okay, so, so, there might be, do you mean on the axes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you might get something like this, right? Something like this. But I'm gonna tell you right now, because I know what the number is supposed to be, that that's not going to land on a dot. It's going to be between some dots, oh. right? Now, then you might think, oh, is it a half? But how do you know? Like, how, how precise, how accurate is your drawing? I know mine is not all that accurate. You just get the general shape, okay? So I'm gonna let that question sit in your mind for a little bit. We will answer it eventually. But I want you to think, how would you, how would you find out what these things are? Do you find them? Right? All right, we've got, we've, we know what this is. That's easy, okay? But what about the others? Keep thinking about it. Let's move on to another question. Let's have a look at, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we'll do two, let's do two B. Two B. We'll do that on our next graph over here. Okay. So again, you don't have to do this every time, but I like to do it so you've got the comparison. We looked at this yesterday. If I've got Y equals X squared, I'm gonna draw that first. Wait, so for the, yep. for the first one. Yep. What about the dots? Like, does... Do you mean like, where are they? No, no, no. Like, are they included in the question or? So far, I don't think so. It says, state the vertical translation, which we did. It's negative seven. Yeah. And the coordinates of the turning point. So the coordinates of that point would be, we can write that in now. It would be zero, negative seven. So that's where the turning point is. So I don't need, we don't need no dots No, not yet. We will get to it though. It's not that hard, but it's a bit of a, that's a problem we haven't looked at yet. Okay. So again, having a look at 2b, here's my y equals x squared graph. I, I always sort of mentally start with that, and then I think about, well, the one that they've given us, how's that different? So 2b says this. Now I wonder if you remember, we had a look at these um, last time. This was an up-down, a vertical shift, because I'm, I'm changing the y value over there. Here I'm changing the x value. So instead of up-down, I'm gonna be going Left, right, yeah, side to side, that's right. Now it's a little bit tricky, it's a minus two, right? That means I actually go, and you can jot this down, to the right, two units. If you ever get confused about, is it to the left or is it to the right? Because it is easy to confuse them. All you need to do is put some values in there. You can draw yourself up a table of values and you can test it out and then get the coordinates, okay? But the point is that you don't need to, if you can remember this, right? That's just a, it's like a last resort. So let's draw this, right? If I go over a couple of units, like so. So there's my two units to the right, okay? So now this turning point that used to be at the origin, it's gonna be here now, right? I, I like to think at this point because it's the most important point in the whole thing, okay? So now I draw it again. Does it always have okay. to, um with the y-axis. Do you mean this point here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. And if you think about it like this, you remember we said it increases, right? But it never goes like actually straight up. It never goes completely vertical. So eventually, it's gonna hit the y-axis somewhere, okay? Now, then that leads to the question, well, how do you find out what that somewhere is? How would you go about doing that? Hmm. Uh, it's a similar question to how do you find out what these are, right? Question mark, okay? All right, let's see if we can answer it before we move any further, okay? Because I want to look at some different kinds of graphs over here. Um, Kyle, I think you had a suggestion for how to find these values. How would you go about doing it? I said factorizing. Okay, factorizing, right. 
What are we going to factorize is the question that I have. Okay? Now, when you have a look at this, right, it's actually interesting. This number doesn't factorize nicely. Seven's a prime number. So here's the way I'm going to do it. <clears throat> I'll get a different color out. These two things, right, they're where the graph intersects with which axis? Which axis? The, it's the horizontal, so it's the x-axis. And so we call these things x-intercepts. Do you remember that? Y-intercepts is where you hit the y-axis. X-intercepts are where you hit the x-axis. So I've got one over here, and I've got another one over here. I've got two of them. Okay. How do I find them? For the x-axis, right, everywhere along the x-axis, the y value, the up-down value, is 0. I'm not, I'm not up, and I'm not down. Okay. So to find these, I say, let y equal 0. That's what I'm going to do to find the x-intercepts. Okay. All right, I'll even write that. To find x-intercepts, let y equal 0. So here's our equation, x squared minus 7. 0 equals x squared minus 7. Okay, suggestions. This is an equation. We've solved these before. What do I do to it? Show me the working as well. Don't just give me the answer. Okay, I'll add 7 to both sides. Excellent. Good pick. Okay. I've also swapped it around because it's a bit normal to have the pronoun on one side. So now, the only way to simplify this is to take the square root of both sides, like this. X equals the square root of 7. But hold on. We have a problem. right? Um, the square root of 7, get your calculator out for a second, because it'll tell you what the square root of 7 is. I am guessing it is between 2 and 3. Actually, I know it's between 2 and 3. What is it? 2.64. 2.64. Okay. Now, I said that was negative 7. 2.64. Okay. I'll just take that as, you know, roughly. Right? Now, I know that I'm on this side of the axis. How do I know? How do I know that this one's 2.64 and not this one? Think about it. Yeah, very good. Good. Both of you are exactly right. This is going to the right, which is positive. This is going to the left, which means it must be negative. But I don't have a negative answer down here. Why don't I have a negative answer? Because you didn't put a negative on the negative amount of working. It's because I forgot. Um, it's actually, well, it's actually the last line of working. It's oh, this right. one here. I should say plus or minus. Plus or minus, right? Do you remember, this is going back way back to when we were doing algebra a couple of terms ago. When you've got this, this is called a quadratic equation. Quadratic, because it has something squared. You know, like a quadrangle, like a squared, anyway. So this is a quadratic equation. It's got two solutions to it. That's a funny thing about these, these equations with a squared in it. Uh, in fact, a bit of a bonus for you, when you've got a three there, how many solutions would you expect? Three. Hmm. Interesting. We'll come back to that idea later on. That's Nathan's question. Okay, anyhow. So therefore, we've got the first one. This is the square root of 7 over here. Two, roughly 2.64. I should put a, you know, approximately. And then the other one over this side is just the same thing, but negative. That's all. Minus 2.64. Or negative root 7. Okay. So, let's see if you're paying attention. <clears throat> to find the x-intercepts, I let y equal 0. That's what I've got in here. To find the x-intercepts, let y equal 0. Here, I want to find the y-intercept. How would I do that? Perfect. Well done. To find the y-intercept, I let x equal 0. It's exactly the other way around. It's kind of like looking from the other side. So this is the equation I've got in this question. This is a new question now, right? And everywhere I see x, I'm going to put 0. y equals 0 minus 2 squared. What's 0 minus 2? It'll be, it'll be negative 2, won't it? Right? And then I have to square it. So it'll be 4 because there's a double negative, And they cancel out each other. You just get left with the positive. That's 4, which I think someone said before. Good pick. So therefore, that value up there is four. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, of course, I'm not gonna rub that off. I'm not gonna rub that off. So, by the way, you keep noticing, I always start with this x squared, and then I think, oh, how do I change it, right? Which is one of the reasons why it's so important to label your graphs so you can tell them apart. Question. For the second graph, um, with the y equals x minus 2 squared, like in brackets, can't you just find the y to set by doing minus 2 squared from the beginning? That's, that's exactly what we did, isn't it? I know, but you don't have to go through that, do you? Well, you see, I think I think there's a there's a yeah. Well, that's the thing you always do though. Yeah, better understanding. Yeah, absolutely. Like I and here the, it's not just better understanding. Suppose I get it wrong. Yeah. Suppose I just I, I say eight instead, like because I'm like I know what this number is. If I have if I have got no working, I've got no way of knowing whether that's right or wrong and how to check. Working it shows you understand what's yeah. going on, and it gives you a way to check if you've got it right. There's. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same idea, just I've written it. All right, good question.